welcome all of you. Uh, since last class, we started discussing about two dimensional NMR. In last week, I introduced to you about what is 2D NMR, why do you require 2D NMR, and I said clearly if we have a pulse sequence design with the end time periods out of which n minus 1 are incremented and 1 is constant and we have n time periods you do n dimensional Fourier transformation you are going to get n dimensional spectrum frequency spectrum. So, we can have 1D, 2D, 3D, 4D etcetera and I also explained to you about the limitations of these experiments time constraints and the size of the molecule both I we discussed and of course, for 1D and 2D, 2D NMR maybe few minutes you can get these days 24 to 30 minutes or for 3D maybe few, few days, 4D few weeks it goes and like that you know it becomes very very lengthy as the exponent becomes longer as you go to higher and higher dimensions and also depends upon the molecular size. I also explained to you how depending upon the molecular size and type of information you want to derive you can even design the decide what is the type of experiment you want whether you want 2D, 3D accordingly you can plan it. And I also explained that 2D can be broad you know classified broadly into two divisions one is correlated by my ex experiment other is resolved experiment both could be homonuclear and heteronuclear. And I explained lot of examples I gave for example, about uh, cohomonuclear experiment like cozy, toxic etcetera, heteronuclear experiment like HSQC, HECAR, HMBC etcetera varieties of experiments are there. And any 2D experiment I also explained to you what is how do you interpret the 2D data if you have a particular peak either on the diagonal or a cross peak. So, depending upon how the spins evolve in the T1 and T2 dimension and how the magnetization is getting transferred from one spin to another spin with, for, with which it is interacting we will have the peaks in the T1 dimension or T2 dimension accordingly. So, this what uh, we discussed and we also saw simple examples of spectra of 1D, 2D, 3D etcetera varieties of spectra how the appearance of spectra are there. So, with the basic introduction to 2D NMR in general multi dimensional NMR from now onwards we will start going to specific experiments. Today I am going to discuss about what is called two dimensional correlated spectroscopy also called 2D COSI co correlated spectro COSI means correlated spectroscopy and the requirement for this type of experiment is the nuclear spin should be scalar coupled there must be an interaction between the nuclear spin J coupling must be there. So, let us see how this what is this 2D experiment how it works we can start discussing. Of course, COSI experiment as I said is a very simple two pulse sequence. As I told you for any two dimensional experiment you have a preparation period, evolution period, mixing period and detection period. And preparation period is the one where the nuclear spins are you know allowed to prepare at attain thermal equilibrium. Then you apply radio frequency pulse 90 degree pulse during this period the nuclear spins evolve under chemical shift of J coupling under different chemical shifts of spins and afterwards you apply 90 degree pulse that is a detection pulse start collecting the FID at a constant time period fixed time and both these pulses are 90 degree pulses of course, you can apply X or Y depending upon your choice and this is a detection period evolution period and this is a preparation period is a course is a very simple two pulse experiment. You may ask me what is mixing time here there is no mixing time this itself you can consider as a mixing time mixing time is absent here mixing period. So, in general there are four periods here I have told you already mixing period is optional we do not need to have a mixing period we do not have it here in principle some people will explain that second pulse itself as a mixing period does not matter. So, this is a two dimensional experiment simple pulse sequence remember course is a simple two pulse experiment. <coughs> I am sorry what COSI gives connectivity among immediate coupled partners. Of course, it can also give language interaction, but immediate coupled partner we can immediately see that for example, if I have a molecule like this a chain there is a chain is broken somewhere here assuming that there is no interaction between this CH2 and this CH2. Then if I do a COSI experiment COSI tells me this is correlated to this you will get a correlated peak that tells me this uh, CH3 group is sitting next to CH2. And I get a correlation from this to this telling this is sitting next to this and also it gives correlation to this saying that this is sitting next to these two. Similarly, this gives correlation to this and this telling it is sitting between these two. This is sitting here it correlates to this alone 
saying that this is isolated. Similarly, we can get the correlation between this and this. Very easy. An interpretation of the 2D Cauchy spectrum is pretty simple. Please remember, Cauchy gives you connectivity pattern among immediate coupled partners. Let us see how the Cauchy pulse sequence works. This is some con something about conceptual understanding that is needed. We will start with a 2D Cauchy for a uncoupled single spin, a one proton which is not coupled to anything else. Simple example is CaCl3 molecule. We are looking at the proton, we will not worry about the natural abundance carbon 1 percent abundance, assume that it is not coupled to proton. So, we are having a single proton, one spin, uncoupled to other thing. Of course, it will not couple to chlorine, that is that is what I want to assume. So, and we will start with the 2D Cauchy spectrum of a single spin. Let us see how this thing works. This is a usual pulse sequence which I already told you. First, we are going to apply a 90 degree pulse. What does it do? We have been discussing. 90 degree pulse tilts the magnetization to x y plane. It, depending upon whether you are applying pulse, applying pulse along this axis or this axis, it will tilt it to other direction because r the 3 are orthogonal to each other. That is what we have been discussing. So, first 90 degree pulse tilts the magnetization to x y plane. What will happen afterwards? The magnetization starts evolving during this time, this, this is a pre precision time during which it evolves according to its chemical shift because there is no coupling here, it is a single spin. So, it has to evolve according to its chemical shift all right. After a time period t, the mag this the, uh, proton would have moved to some distance, the vector in, has moved to some distance that we have already been discussing, it goes by pi into nu into t 1, t 1 is the time you allow for the spins to process in the x y plane and how much it has moved is given by this expression all right. And now, once you start moving like this for example, somewhere here you can resolve this into the two components along this and the x axis and y axis and we have a cosine component here and a sine component along x axis. The magnetization can be resolved into two components this vector cosine component is along y and sine component is along x axis all right. What does second pulse do? Ro? This is what the thing what is happening to the vector during the period T 1 after applying 90 pulse. The second pi by 2 pulse acts only in the y component that is what is happening and the x component is not at all affected and it continues to process the way it, way it is processing. It is not affected only y component of this is getting affected. Then what happens? We will allow it to wait for some time and collect the signal. Do the Fourier transformation of this it produces a spectra with a single resonance line versus a single peak because one proton is there no other thing is the CACL3 molecule I have taken only one proton and it gives you one chemical shift one peak. What is the intensity of this? It depends upon how far it has rotated, how far it has persisted because we will take, take the component of this along the detection axis y axis cosine component we will consider. And let us consider one of the peak, we will measure the intensity of this peak which varies as a function of cos theta. I told you what question of this time period it keeps on varying given by this expression the amplitude of the signal as a function of T 1 how we can give how it varies is given by this expression. What we will do is take that part, uh, peak and st start measuring the intensity of this as a function of T 1. I keep on varying the T 1 initially the signal is let us have a negative intensity comes down becomes 0 goes positive and after some time it comes keeps coming down like this. So, it starts like this okay, and then becomes 0 and then goes up like this it starts oscillating it becomes a oscillatory function. Essentially what we did by doing this variation of the varying T 1 we could build a pseudo FID that is what I said about in general introduction when we were discussing about 2D NMR we can build a pseudo FID in the F 1 dimension all right. At longer times what will happen? Signal intensity completely diminishes. Why? Because it is also relaxing. It is oscillated at the same time decaying exponentially, it decays and decay is also there because of relaxation. So, as longer values of T 1 you keep on waiting for a long time signal intensity becomes 0 that is what we saw in the FID keep collecting after, after a long time there would not be any signal at all maximum signal is during this period keeps decreasing with time. So, after a long time there would not be any signal completely diminished. 
Now, we will do the, the Fourier transformation in the T2 domain. What you will get? We get a frequency data because we are collecting a day signal in at a fixed uh, time period that is called a F2 period at a T2 period and I collect it and there is also data in the other time domain also. I collect the data in the frequency in the F2 domain which comes from the A2, F2, F2 or the T2 period and also time domain data in the other T1 period. So, both are there. What I am going to do is I will do the Fourier transformation of the FID in the T1 domain. I can do separately individually Fourier transformation in both the domains. If I do the uh, FID collected during T1, if I do the Fourier transformation, I get the frequency F1. This gives the frequency to me in two dimensions now. When I do the Fourier transformation in the F2 dimension, I get omega 2. When I do the Fourier transformation in the T1 dimension, I get omega 1. Now, a two Fourier transformation in both the dimensions gives me spectrum in two dimensions omega 1 comma omega 2 both the dimension I get the frequency spectrum. True, I am collecting the FID both in T1 period and T2 period. I am doing the Fourier transformation in both T1 and T2 period I will get a frequency spectrum like this. Where does the peak come? The double Fourier transformation of this gives a peak where the two signals intercept like this. It comes exactly in the diagonal because this signal whatever was its frequency in the T1 period continues to remain same in the T2 period also because it is a single frequency single spin there is no way it can interact with any other spin. So, it has not given its magnetization to any other thing there is no transfer of magnetization it was during the T1 period it has some frequency omega a it remains same in the T2 dimension also they getting unaffected as a consequence we get a peak on the diagonal because if from this peak sitting at the top come to vertically you get one frequency go horizontally you get another frequency this omega a frequency is identical in both the dimensions that is why it is coming on the diagonal this is what happens. So, if I get a take a molecule only single spin is a single proton not coupled to anything else and do a course you will get only one peak on the diagonal that is what you should understand. <coughs> Let us take the example of two peaks instead of one we will take the example of two peaks that is a and x and now I am putting a condition to uncoupled spins what do you mean by uncoupled j a x is 0 coupling is 0 I assume there is no coupling but there is a chemical shift of a chemical shift of x both they are different the chemical offset frequencies are different. Let us see what happens to this type of molecule to uncoupled spins in the Cauchy pulse sequence. When I do the Fourier transformation of these two uncoupled spins exactly if I take the frequency a okay, it remains same in this axis and also in this axis. Take, sitting, take the peak here go horizontally I get a peak go vertically you get a peak and this frequency and this frequency is same. So, this if I if I say this is new A correspond to frequency A or chemical shift correspond to A this also chemical shift correspond to A it is a diagonal. Now, come to this peak again from the peak sitting on the peak go horizontally you get a peak go vertically up you get a peak and this is frequency x that means this also x this also x that means when I have a diagonal peak its frequency remains same both in the T 1 period and in the T 2 period its frequency is identical whether in the whether you do it in the measure in the F 1 dimension or in the F 2 dimension that is what the peak which is coming on the diagonal in a two, two uncoupled spectrum Cauchy spectrum we have two peaks coming on the diagonal and dry uh, line vertically go to uh, along omega 2 axis or along omega 1 axis you get the identical frequency for both of them and this is what it is and if I can take a projection of this spectrum you get it we get two peaks like this. I can take the projection along f 1 also then also I get two peaks that means whatever you take a one dimensional spectrum of these two uncoupled spins two molecules let us say water and CaCl 3 which are not coupled at all they are two different molecules take the NMR spectrum of it 
total n number spectrum you get two peaks one for CSL3 one for H2 H2O. So that will be on the diagonal so plot take the projection along this axis you get two peaks one for CSL3 one for H2O here is same here also same peak CSL3 for this if you take a horizontally if you draw a line this also CSL3 peak and this is a water peak if you assume this is CSL3 and this is water this also water peak this also water peak this also CSL3 this also CSL3 that means if I take the projection I, I can take it along F1 axis or F2 axis does not matter when I have two uncoupled spins we get two spectrum on either dimension we get the spectrum which is nothing but a simple one dimensional spectrum okay and what do you understand from this for uncoupled spins the peaks always come on the diagonal and if you take the projection of this uncoupled spins if are there and the pro uh, projection along F1 or F2 it correspond to simple one dimensional spectrum where you get single peaks. And now let us see what happens in a realistic example I take 3 solvents Ca3Cn, H2O and CaCl3 all the 3 I take the Cauchy spectrum of them. none of them are interacting they are all 3 different molecules CaCl3 comes here H2O comes here Ca3Cn comes here at a one is at close to 2 ppm 4.8 7.2 ppm I get 3 peaks. So, 3 peaks will be there on the diagonal. So, you take any peak on the diagonal go vertically up go horizontally you hit a peak and that correspond to peak which is Ca3 Cn coming at 1.94 ppm. Go to the next one go vertically go horizontally you hit the same peak on both the dimensions that correspond to water peak coming at 4.8 ppm identically you can talk about CHCl3 also that is how it is. So, th if you take the spectrum of 3 and solvents which are non interacting then you get 3 peaks on the diagonal that is what the spectrum. So, you simply understand the logic if I take the 2 dimensional Cauchy spectrum of uncoupled spins they always appear on the diagonal. So, they take the projection of that frequency in F1 axis or F2 axis it remains same it pertains to simple peak corresponding to what you get in the one dimensional spectrum all right. With this we will go further we will try to understand the Cauchy spectrum of two coupled spins how, how what happens in the same example earlier cup A x was I set 0, but now I make it non 0 let us see what happens if it is non 0 exactly A and S are coupled with a coupling constant A and I have the chemical shift nu and nu a and nu x fine we will understand what is happening with the pulse sequence first 90 degree pulse makes the magnetization associated with the spin a I will talk about only one spin right right now for new spin a what happens to spin x it should be identical because the interactions in NMR are mutual we will understand what is happening to spin a 90 degree pulse makes the magnetization associated with spin a to process during T1 at its chemical shift nu a because it has a chemical shift nu a this is the free precession period after the application of pulse you are not doing anything my spins are free to process also it has coupling that one thing but what will happen when it is processing at this frequency and this frequency it produces a frequency peak at this frequency which is same in both the dimensions nu a I am considering only nu a like assume if it is uncoupled and there is only one chemical shift it keys a peak which is nu a comma nu a what we observed in the previous slide uncoupled spin frequency remains same in both omega 1 and omega, 1 to omega 2 dimensions. So, it gives a peak what do you call this peak this is a diagonal peak that is what we observed. So, nu a because it is precising at its own frequency in both the dimensions both t 1 and t 2 period it gives a diagonal peak which correspond to identical frequency in both T1 and T2 periods. Further what happens the second n degree pulse transfers part of this magnetization to the coupled x spin during the process here spins are interacting it will transfer part of its magnetization to coupled x spin that is a polarization transfer what is called magnetization transfer that takes place 
and what will happen to this transfer magnetization? It gives it to which spin? It gives to x spin. A spin gives part of its magnetization to x spin. Why? Because they are j coupled, they are, they are the scalar coupling between these two. So, it will transfer part of its magnetization to x spin. Then what will happen to that? The, this x spin not only presses at its own frequency, also it presses at the frequency of A. So, it will now x spin will precess both at frequency of A and also at the frequency of X. That is what happens. So, then it will get, give me a peak corresponding to two different chemical shifts in two dimensions. That means, it gives nu A comma nu X. That means, I get a peak. We remember we understood how to interpret the 2D spectrum. We get a peak in two at uh, where if you get the peak go along omega 1 dimension you get a frequency corresponding to chemical shift of A. Go along the other dimension you get the chemical shift of X both will be there. You will it will get you will give, get the peak which correspond to two different chemical shift in two dimensions all right. What do you call this? This is called a cross peak when the chemical shifts are identical nu a comma nu a it is diagonal for nu a the spin a also gives a cross peak in addition to diagonal at frequency nu a comma nu x which correspond to cross peak ok. What is that for example, if it is like this it, it gives a peak here nu a and also gives a peak here let us say this is a and this is x. So, nu a gives a peak at its own frequency and diagonal and also gives a frequency at x you understand it gives two different chemical shifts at in two, dim in two different dimensions and this peak is called a cross peak, but one sitting on the diagonal the diagonal peak I told you already is a cross peak. So, nu a gives a cross peak at the frequency nu a comma nu x meaning go to the along the chemical shift of a go horizontally you get a peak here come vertically down you get a peak here this corresponds to chemical shift of x this corresponds to chemical shift of a that is what it means. So, it give you get a peak cross peak where in one dimension you get the chemical shift frequency of one in other dimension you get the chemical shift frequency of the other called cross peak. So, the precision of magnetization during T 1 and T 2 period for spin a it means is not identical they are no longer at the same frequency. See for the spin a in the T 1 period it is at frequency a in the T 2 period it has frequency nu a comma nu x. So, we have two frequencies for this peak one comes on the diagonal which comes at the identical frequency of its own mean both the dimensions and also we get a cross peak which comes at the frequency of its own and also a peak at the corresponding frequency of the x spin. Here frequency I mean is the chemical shift that means you get a diagonal peak which correspond to chemical shift of A in both the dimensions and also get a cross peak which correspond to chemical shift in one dimension of A in one dimension pertains to chemical shift of x in the other dimension. This is how you are going to get peaks for the A ok. Then I will ask a question what is going to happen for x spin we are discussing about a spin please remember I was telling you interactions in NM are always mutual. If A is interacting with x and giving its magnetization to x same thing happens x also give to A that means the x spin behave identically it evolves at its own frequency in T 1 dimension and also at its own frequency in the T 2 dimension that means it gives a peak at nu x comma nu x which is a diagonal peak and also nu x in the one dimension in the T 1 dimension it gives a peak at its own chemical shift whereas in the T 2 dimension it gives a chemical frequency at a chemical shift of A you understand very interesting thing A gave a peak at its own frequency and a frequency of x. Similarly, x will give chemical peak at its own frequency and also at the frequency of A. What does it mean? It means A will give rise to diagonal peak at its own frequency 
x will give diagonal peak at its own frequency, a will give a cross peak with x, x will give with a cross peak with x, x will give cross peak with a. So, this is what it is. So, the we have diagonal cross peaks pertaining to both these planes and this is the pattern we get in the course you know. What is that pattern? We will see. The diagonal peaks will have four peaks in the square pattern. Why it comes? If I take this one diagonal peak for let us say this is the chemical shift of A, it will have four peaks in the square pattern. Why four peaks? Because A is split into a doublet because of X. Similarly, X will have four peaks in the square pattern. Diagonal peaks have fine structure of four peaks and this separation corresponds to AAX, JAX, this also corresponds to JAX identically for this also. So, the cross peaks also will have the fine structure similar to this. Now, A will give it its own frequency as diagonal, it also gives cross peak at the frequency of X. This is also four peaks, this is a cross peak. What, do you, what does this will give? Again, this play separation will give you J coupling. You understand? Now, what happens for X? X also gives a cross peak to with A. Not only at its own frequency, gives cross peak. So, we will get four peaks for cross peaks similar to square pattern here. So, basically what is that you are going to get is you will get for diagonal for each of them four four peaks cross peaks four four peaks. So, totally you are going to get 16 peaks for both spins 1 and 2 the diagonal peaks are in phase doublets. Okay, we get four peaks that is fine, but the further I am going to tell you the diagonal peaks are in phase doublets in both f 1 and f 2 dimensions centered the frequency nu 1 and nu 2 and that separation is j. What do you mean by in phase doublet what uh, that we have to understand? If I have a doublet like this a is coupled to x it is a, a is a doublet similarly x is a doublet and both the frequencies like this are in phase they are all let us say both are positive like this. This separation gives you a coupling constant j a x and this is called in phase doublet they are in phase. So, both the dimensions I have four peaks diagonal, diagonal peaks are in phase and if I may take the projection both are in phase, if I take this projection both are in phase both are positive. So, both the dimensions they are in phase doublets it means. What about the cross peaks? Cross peak always arises in cosy because of transfer of anti phase coherence to anti phase coherence. What is an anti phase coherence? We were discussing this during spin lock time with discussion and other than the spin echoes and also inept we discussed a lot J modulation or the various places we discussed this anti phase. The anti phase is like the, the cross peaks are anti phase that is one is positive other is negative like this. You can get this is called anti phase doublet and the cross peaks are always anti phase in both the dimensions. For example, this is the four cross peaks for the four peaks square pattern for cross peak. If one is positive other is negative. In this dimension again here this is positive and then you go this is negative here. So, in this dimension it is positive and negative here positive and negative this is how it goes. What it means the cross peaks are anti phase doublets in both the dimensions both in T 1 dimension and T 2 dimension or omega 1 omega 2 dimensions. Similarly, diagonal both have in phase doublets in omega 1 dimension and omega 2 dimension. So, this is the pattern. So, and doublets are always out of phase by 90 degree that is what is called anti phase here. So, in homonuclear 2D cosy always the cross peak appear as pairs homonuclear it is always a pair and, and it is symmetric with respect to diagonal obviously logically it is true when I have a peak like this a homonuclear case chemical shift in this ray in this both are identical because same uh, nuclei we are considering both the dimension and this is the diagonal if this peak comes here and this is the diagonal peak and if a cross peak comes here cross peak comes here because the interaction is mutual. So, with respect to diagonal they are always symmetric cross peaks are always symmetric with respect to diagonal and they appear as pairs this is the 
important property of 2D cosy. Homonuclear. Remember, it is homonuclear. Heteronuclear, it won't be like this. That is different. So, a cosy pattern of two coupled spins, how do they look? Is like this. If I have two weakly coupled spin system, I already discussed this in a proper nomenclature. A and X spin. What is the pattern you are going to get? You get doublet for A and doublet for X. So, this if this is the chemical shift of A, this is the chemical shift of X. Similarly, this is A and X in the same order. This is diagonal. This is F1 dimension. This is always F2 dimension. I get four peaks here. Exactly big like this. Four peaks. A appears at its own frequency. They are called auto correlation peaks. A will correlate within itself because there are two doublet. This will correlate to this. This will correlate. This will give cross peak to this. This will give cross peak to this. So as a consequence, we get cross peak. This and this gives cross peak between themselves. They are called auto correlated peaks. And similarly, X also gives four life peaks in the square pattern. That means this is also auto correlated peak. This art, this and this are correlating give rise to cross peak between themselves. X appears now both A and X spins give auto correlated peaks. Finally, what is going to happen is A frequency will give rise to cross peak at its coupled partner X. Okay, this like this. X this is X also gives gets modulated because of frequency A, it gives its energy or magnetization to A, X will give to A, A will give to X, they will give rise to cross peaks like this. As I told you, the in phase doublet all are positive. Here, anti phase doublet in this dimension, if this is positive, this is negative. In this dimension, if this is negative, this is positive. That is what it means. So, this is the cosy pattern you are going to get in two spins which are coupled, weakly coupled. So, signs and uh, uh, signs of diagonal and cross peaks are like this. Both are, if I say closed circle, positive, open circle, negative. That means here negative positive, positive negative, positive positive, positive positive. Both the dimension positive. Here one dimension positive and negative. Other dimension also positive and negative. Two peaks. So they're antiphase character like this. Plus plus, minus minus like that. So if you want to plot the spe spectrum, this will be like this. Both are in phase in both the dimensions. Here one is positive, other negative. Both are antiphase or cross peak in both the dimension. In this dimension also antiphase in this dimension also antiphase. So, diagonal and cross peak structure can be understood like this. If it is a diagonal peak, it is like this. If it is a cross peak, it is like this. If I take the projection of one of the four peaks, if I take, if I take the projection, this is the cross peak pattern projection both the dimensions. This is the cross projection of the diagonal peak in both the dimensions. So, please remember cosy diagonal peaks are in phase in both dimensions, cross peaks are antiphase in both the dimensions and this correspond to positive peak, this correspond to negative peak. Okay, with the now time, since the time is getting up, we will continue with the further uh, you know discussion on the cosy in the next class. But so far what I discussed, I explained to you cosy is a simple two spin uh, two pulse sequence, two 90, 90 degree T1, 90 degree T2, that is all two pulse sequence. Preparation period is there, evolution period is there and detection period is there mixing period is absent. What is going to happen? I took the example of how the spins evolve. After 90 degree pulse magnetization comes to x axis, x y plane, it starts processing, it will have x component, y component, okay. x component is okay, one thing which goes keeps processing, it does not get altered, y component is the one which you are going to detect, it will have, it will have projection along x axis and y axis, cosine and sine component. The cosine component is the one in which we are, we are anyway going to detect it. And the, as depending upon how much it has processed, intensity changes. I took the example of two, one weekly, uh, and one spin which is not coupled at all, isolated spin. I told you it comes at the on the diagonal, whose frequency remains same in both the dimensions. Took two example, an uh, example of two cup, two spins uncoupled, it gives two diagonal peaks. Frequency remains same in both the dimensions for that. Then I took the example of coupled spin. Then it, I said coupled spin, we get diagonal peak four peaks of equal, uh, square pattern for both the A and X spin. Cross peaks also give four peaks in the square pattern, but I said diagonal peaks are in phase in both the dimensions, all are positive signal. 
whereas the cross peaks are antiphase in both the dimension one is positive other is negative in both the dimensions and this is what we understood the structure of cross peaks and diagonal peaks in a two simple weakly coupled spin system and we will continue further away how we can use cosy in understanding further next week in the next class we will discuss this thank you.